Pleasure. Okay, so this is a typical patient who presents, uh, who might present to your primary care facility or emergency unit. This is a, a 40 old, 45 year old gentleman who sustained a direct blow to the uh, um, dorsal ulnar aspect of the left hand. He's otherwise fit and healthy. Remember, it's all about history, examination, special investigations. History, you want to know about the patient. He's a 45 year old, otherwise fit and healthy gentleman. Um, but, um, and the current history, the problem why he's coming today is that he sustained a direct blow yesterday. Yesterday to the dorsal ulnar aspect of the left hand. So that's the history. Examination is look, feel, move in orthopedics. So when you look, you can mention previous scars and that, but that's not clinically relevant. You can also mention the tattoos. That's not clinically relevant. What is clinically relevant is the obvious swelling and deformity of the left middle finger. The skin is, uh, is shiny, implying that there's edema and swelling. And if you look at it on the AP view, it looks rotated, internally rotated. It looks slightly angulated and deviated in the ulnar direction. And if you look at the side view, it looks like it's dorsally uh, uh, tilted in, the, in a dorsal direction. The finger is held in a flex position. And if we turn over the other way, turn over, you can see there's obvious uh, ecchymosis or bruising on the volar aspect of the hand. So that's look. Then you move to feel. Once again, what you're trying to do by feeling is you're trying to work out the problem. So you want to try and work out, is this joint dislocated or is the fracture, is it a fracture that's displaced? So you palpate the, the bony landmarks and I can feel the joint is located, but it feels like there's a fracture here that is tilted in the dorsal direction. Um, the other thing to look at is the rotation of the finger and the angulation. There's not much else to look for by palpating. I mean, you can comment on the circulation, so there's no circulatory embarrassment to the finger, but uh, that, you know, the finger is warm and well perfused. And then uh, move, make a fist. It's active and passive, make a fist. So he's got very limited active motion. And then passive is going to be too painful. Um, and if I palpate him, this is where he's tender over the proximal phalanx. Let's move over quickly to the uh, uh, x ray. On the lateral view, you can. On the lateral view, try and get the, uh, get the windows. You can see the windows in the background, so just come in. Oh. Um, from the lateral view, you can see it's, uh, the, the, the bones are overlying each other, so it does make it a bit difficult, but you can see how there's the fracture of the proximal phalanx of the little finger, and it's displaced in a dorsal direction or angulated dorsally, which is also called apex volar angulation. And if we look at the, um, if we look at the uh, AP view, you can see extremely comminuted multifragmentary piece extending into the joint so it's a fracture involving the proximal two-thirds of the left little finger proximal phalanx. Um, if you look at the shape of the fracture, well, it's highly comminuted. So it's not uh, oblique or transverse or spiral. It's just comminuted, uh, typical of a direct blow. You can imagine it's shattered. Um, and then if you look at the displacements, we always talk about short shift tilt twist. Is there shortening? Well, it's difficult to be sure, but there probably is some shortening. Um, it doesn't look like it's too uh, shifted. Uh, there's not much in the way of tilt or angulation, and twist is a clinical uh, assessment. Um, once again, on the on the on the uh, oblique view, you can see. This is now postgraduate tutorial on the same problem. Uh, you, saw, you saw from the undergraduate tutorial this patient has got a, has got a highly comminuted fracture of the left little finger proximal phalanx with a typical uh, apex volar uh, angulation or dorsal tilt. The reason for that, uh, this is now seen on the lateral view, uh, there's the uh, metacarpal, proximal phalanx, middle phalanx, distal phalanx. The deforming forces are always the extensor, which pulls the distal fragment into extension, and the uh, lumbricals, or the interossei, which pull the proximal fragment into uh, flexion. So the, de the typical deforming force is exactly that. It basically it goes into uh, apex volar or dorsal tilt. So, and that's due to the extensor pulling that way and the lumbricals or inter interossei pulling that way. And that's why the treatment is to put them into a, a hyperflex position. They then correct the deformity. So you put them into MP joint flexion and that corrects the deformity. In that plaster slab, in the safe position, you free up the palm and get them moving from day one. Uh, and then after three or four weeks, you can get them out of the slab and get them moving uh, because it'll be sticky enough to avoid displacement. Um, a fracture like this does not do well fixed. It's almost impossible to fix that fracture as you saw from the x-ray uh, and that is the treatment of choice.